Hello, I'm John. And I'm Miriam, and this is our testimony. God has been with us through our entire roller coaster of a life, and he's always provided, and he's always been there for us through it all, and he will continue to be there for us until he takes us. God has picked me up out of a ditch and given me life. Amen. And given me more than life. He's given me, he's given me purpose. What's up, Fresh Start Church? Come on, let's stand on our feet today. If you've got air in your lungs this morning, we're going to sing out and worship the Lord. Amen? Come on, let's put the hands together. And I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over. Stood in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have a resurrection power. Yes, I do. But the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever. Come on, sing it out. This is my testimony from there to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water, sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. Oh, this is my testimony. If you got breath in your lungs today, if you've been raised up, come on, sing this out. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Come on, church. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. No. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead.
If what didn't happen in that moment, I, I probably wouldn't be here because I probably would have killed myself, yeah. honestly. I didn't like uh, uh, the way I was living. I didn't like any of it. I was in Atlantic City. I was in, I was in a, um, not a homeless shelter, but like a rooming house. Pastor Kevin from New Life called me and gave me the job. And that is, was the moment for me, like, yeah. to help me turn myself to where I am right now. But even, even between that moment and even still today, you know, there's, a, there's been a lot of, you know, you know, back up. But now I'm, I'm, I'm straight ahead. You have better tools. Yeah, I've got better tools, exactly. Now I'm praying. I'm not, I'm not doing the things I did before. I'm actually praying. Well, we see a Christian counselor. For me, I started going to her first, and then speaking about John, she was like, yeah, you just need to get him in here. Like, I need to pray over you guys. I need to work with you guys. Um, so, and on top of that, with um, our daughter Lorelai's diagnosis, um, we were also told by medical doctors and um, anybody that worked, knew about ataxia telechantasia would tell us, um, yeah, you're gonna wanna see a counselor. Um, you're gonna have to be able to process and deal with, you know, diagnoses and bumps coming down the road um, just because, you know, they don't know. As a mother, um, that's something you don't wanna think about with your child. So we were told she had cerebral palsy when she was three. I was on a job site and uh, I had to tear it all up and do it right and just because my head wasn't there. And He's I really should have just, so. I should have just taken some time. We were going to therapies, um, just doing everything for cerebral palsy, but something kept telling me, mm. So once we got her correct diagnosis, we ended up moving to a different hospital which, and doctor, which I think that was the Lord as well. Because <laughs> um, he knew, I knew there was something going on with my baby and I couldn't put my finger on it. Then when they told us what it was, it was a taxi telegentasia and they called and I remember I was home just with her and I dropped down to my knees and I just lost it because they told me, the doctor said there's a life expectancy. So we were already coming here when we got the diagnosis. Um, my cousin that comes here, Jennifer Grist, um, had told us about this awesome Sunday school, Champions Club, that caters to um, special needs. So we were already having difficulties finding a church home because just I wanted Lorelai to be comfortable. She brought me over to Champions Club where I met Miss Lisa. Um, from that moment on, I, I remember saying to her in the, um, right at the desk, I have, we met for a reason and I don't know what it is yet, but I know we met for a reason. And I mean, ever since then, she's just been um, an awesome, you know, person in our lives, just from helping us, you Amazing. know, with groceries, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. prayers, yeah. just, just everything. She has been an awesome church mom and just, you know, friend to us. And I remember her telling me when we found out this diagnosis, um, she had said, well, sh she's, she's our miracle and we're just thanking him ahead of time. So that's something that I've always said. And I keep, I, I, I keep, I just repeat it to myself over and over. That's what actually got us through because our daughter, she had a very bad fever. Mm -hmm. It was like almost 105. It was 104.9. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you, like, and that you was after the surgery. The, you can see the infection trying to come out through her skin all over her body. It was just bright like... red everywhere. So it's just, it's a lot to, to take in. And before I wasn't even able to talk about it, I see him working in me every single day. I'm, I'm trying to help new parents that are coming, you know, they come to the group and they say, how do you do it? And I say, I do it with God. Like I do it walk, I, I do it walking with him because I can't, I can't do it any other way. So in February, um, my 2005 Chevy I had for about six years. She, she ran really good for us. Um, but you know, we did everything we could to fix her, but it was like, you know, we put this money into the car and it's still not, it's still not working. It's overheating and it's not doing the right thing. And, um, someone mentioned, Hey, why don't you set up a, a GoFundMe? I, I had prayed about it again and I felt him just say, just do it. Stop being a scaredy cat and just do it. Within minutes, wow, yeah. money just started rolling. Wow, yeah. I was praying on this. I, I was praying, just show us. I'm gonna let you show me which one it is, Father. Right. That's it. 
we continued our search. We continued praying. Um, people just were blessing us yeah. <laughs> left On, and right. Wow. Um, I know it's the Lord, and I know He's showing us that He's working in us. But the weird part about um, finding the van was <clears throat> we were at a different car dealership, and this thing was across the street, and it was behind other cars. Now, at this point, she's not finding anything that she really likes. And I'm telling her, I said, babe, let's go over there. She's like, well, I don't see it. I said, well, let's go over there. And I jumped out of the van just to see if it had tags on it. I went over, I looked at the price. I knew it was it. I knew it was it. God was telling me. He gave us exactly what weird. we needed it was so when weird. we needed it. it was and so we weird didn't even know we needed everything. that. Like, we're just, we're still praying and we know that the Lord is working and he's moving in our lives. And just, I, I'm st I still can't believe that it's mine. And for me, with any news that may come up uh, with anything, um, whether it's medically or finances, for me, I, I just have to trust in him. Um, this is what I pray. God, even though I don't know what the future holds, you do. Nothing is impossible for you. There is nothing that I face that you cannot conquer and no battle or fight that you haven't already won. So when I feel discouraged by events going on around me, remind me that you are in control. Nothing can separate me from your love. Thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So that's in my Bible app and I, and I have it as a reminder, as a prayer. And that's, that's how I'm gonna handle any future issues. Amen. Isn't that a great story? Let's stand to our feet again, and we're going to sing to a God that is so faithful. He's so faithful to you. He's so faithful to me. And today, he's the only one in this place worthy of our praise. So let's sing this to him. Father of kindness. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me from darkness you have filled me with peace giver of mercy you're my help in time Lord I can help but see faithful sing it out
response to his promises is to rest in them, is to have confidence in those promises. So sing this with me. I will rest. Just rest in him. In your promises, my confidence is your faithfulness. Sing it again. I will rest. Come on, church. In your confidence. And my confidence, it's in you. It's your faithfulness. Sing it again. Come on, church. I will rest. Is your faithfulness? I will rest in your promises. And my confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest, I will rest in your promises. My That's going to be your, your family. Then a great nation is going to come from you. And Abraham was like, God, I don't have any kids. How's it going to happen? And so God gave Abraham and his wife, Sarah, who was in her 80s, he gave them a son, and they named him Isaac. And then God's request next was, Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac. And the Bible even says, the one that you love so much I want you to take him and I want you to sacrifice him to me. And you can imagine Abraham was like, God, what are you talking about? But it says that Abraham began to obey God and he took Isaac up to the mountain and he got ready to sacrifice him. The writer of the book of Hebrews says that Abraham trusted in God so much that Abraham reasoned that if he killed his son, that God had the power and the ability to raise him back up from the dead. And so Abraham said, I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to do what God asked me to do because he's a faithful God. And so Abraham took Isaac and Abraham began to sacrifice his son. And just in that moment, Abraham heard a noise and in the bush, it was a, there was a ram there and God had provided. And when Abraham was done sacrificing that ram, he named the place Jehovah Jireh. He named it the God who provides, the God who sees, the God who knows. And what I want you to know today, church, in this time where we're worshiping God, he sees and he knows, and nobody else may know, but God does. And God is fully able to provide your need, to raise up whatever in your life is dead. God can raise it up. He's the God who provides. He sees. He knows. He is Jehovah Jireh. Let's sing this right now to him. Jireh, you are enough.
of God today, amen. I, I'm so thankful for a God who not only promises things, but honors his promise, and you can trust in him. I'm so thankful that, that he is faithful, amen. You know, this past week, I was, uh, I was at a table with uh, several people, probably about seven or eight people, asking me questions about, about God and about faith and all that stuff, and, and uh, just most, mostly people who are just searching. And, you know, I, I heard some interesting questions, some interesting answers, and, and I just try to be as honest and genuine I could and answer questions. Because, you know, there, there are people in our world that have questions about faith. We just got to put ourselves in a place where they feel okay to ask them, right? And what I, what I learned in that conversation is that 
many people have enough knowledge to believe in Jesus. There's a lot of people out there that know enough to believe, but as I drove away uh, this last week from that conversation, I thought to myself, yes, people need knowledge about Jesus, but what I realized is that they needed faith. Amen? Amen. They need to have the, the ability to, to, to take a step, take a leap of faith. Uh, you, you, you know this and, and all that, but to, to have faith. And I think the more that we can project the faithfulness of God, the more we can, we can share what God has given us, the more we can share the knowledge that we have of Jesus, the greater opportunity there is for people out there to then take the step of faith. But we've got to show, how would they know unless we first share, amen? How are they going to know about God's faithfulness if the only time we talk about it is when we sing about it in church? And so we got to be able to get out there and share faith because people need faith in Jesus. You and I need faith in Jesus. Father, I, I thank you for this day. God, I pray today, God, as we gather here, I pray, God, that I just pray that you would challenge us, that you would encourage us. Thank you for the time that we've already had and just to be able to, 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 to worship you in song and now we get to worship you in the word. And I pray, God, that, that, that your word would just uh, take up root in us, that, that it would challenge us, encourage us, God, today that we might walk out of here with a faith stronger than we walked in. And God, we thank for all that you've done. We ask it in Jesus' name. Everyone said... Amen. What's up, Fresh Start Church? Say, so what's up, Fresh Start Church? Good to be in the house today. Well, we are in week two of our series, Dips and Tips. Can you say dips and tips? We are talking about the mountains and the valleys and the caves and the wilderness and everywhere in between that we sometimes find ourselves in this life. How many know that life is a journey, right? And that journey takes us in many places. And sometimes uh, we have good days, sometimes we have bad days. But in the midst of all of those moments and those times, we have to learn how to live for God. Come on, somebody, amen? How are we going to live for God when it's not only the mountaintop, but how are we going to live for God when it's in the valley? How are we going to find God, experience God, trust God, honor God, and serve God in all of those moments. And so that's what we're looking at in this series. We're not specifically concerned about, you know, hey, just life on the mountaintop or life in the valley, but how are we going to live life in all of those moments? Because I really believe this, that when there is a consistency to our faith, we can handle all of those moments in life's journey. Amen? How many know we need to be able to handle all of those moments in life's journey? Some people can't handle the good times. It's the good times that, that take them out. In the first part of the Lord's Prayer, it's when the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, we, we begin to see some clues as to how to live for Jesus no matter where you find yourself. How to live for Jesus whether you're on the highest mountain or the lowest valley, whatever circumstances you might find yourself in. In Matthew chapter 6 and, and verse number 9, it says this, Our Father in heaven. Could you say that with me? Our Father in heaven in heaven. It says, how would be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Let's say that together. Your kingdom come, your will be done. It says, on earth as it is in heaven. In, in, in this just short part of the prayer, in the beginning, you see an acknowledgement of who God is and how, what that leads us to what our response should be. And I want to talk about three things today, and I like alliteration, so I'm going to, you know, they're going to sound like, but we're going to talk about three words. We're going to talk about agreement, alignment, and assignment. Amen? Yep. Agreement, alignment, and assignment. So if you're taking notes, I encourage you to write that down, because here, here's the truth. When we come into agreement with God, our Father in heaven, he is our Father in heaven, amen? How would be his name? He should be respected. He should be revered for who he is. When we come into agreement with God, we are aligned with God's perfect will on this earth as it already is in heaven. Another thing is, too, when we are aligned with heaven, 
we find that God can use us in ways we never thought possible before. Here's what I believe. I believe that the church is filled with people who have a power that is sitting back at rest because we're not enabling the spirit of God that God has put in us. And, and there is so much more that the church could be doing. There is so much more that could be happening. There are so many more lives that could be being affected if we would realize that we need to get in an agreement with God that aligns us with his will. Come on, amen. And so here's the truth. We, we, we get in, in an agreement, and then we get in alignment. Can't figure out today. My, my note page just keeps scrolling while I'm talking, so I don't know what's going on. But. And, so the, and so when we get in alignment with him, we find out that God can use it in ways we never thought possible. And then when we begin to, to walk in our assignment, when we begin to walk in that assignment, the purpose that God created us for is when we begin to understand fulfillment. Bible says in Ephesians 2.10 that we are God's workmanship. We're his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Amen? He created us for something. Amen? Look at somebody next to you and say, you were created for something great. God didn't just create you to create you. God designed you. God, God made you his masterpiece. There's a reason that you're on this planet. And so you should have a hope that what is before you is greater than what is behind you. And, and so we're to walk in that. God wants us to fulfill that purpose. And when we are aligned with God's plan and purpose in heaven, we are then propelled forward and we are unstoppable with that momentum that God has placed in us. Because God is always on the move. Amen? He wants his people to always be on the move. So seeing God's kingdom come to the point where his will is done through us uh, here on earth first requires agreement on our part. I want to talk about that first. Agreement. Everything starts with agreement. I know we all want the blessing of God. We all want the favor of God, but sometimes we want to do it outside the agreement with God. Amen? But if you want those things, if you want to be used by God, it starts with being in agreement with God. Not in agreement with your will, not in agreement with your way, but in, will, in agreement with God's will and God's way. In Amos chapter 3 and verse number 3, it says this. It says, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so. In other words, two people can't walk together unless they first come into agreement to do so. The, the walk together means to walk in unison, amen? If everybody would stand up with me real quick, just stand up and turn this way, all right? So we're going we're gonna to kind of just walk in place, but I want you to go right foot, the other right, ready? Right foot, left foot. Just keep right foot, we're kind of just going left foot. Right foot, left foot. Now what can happen is sometimes, keep doing that right foot, we're all walking in the same way, in the same direction in agreement, but if some of you decide to start going this way and going that way and someone start going the other way, then we're all walking, but we're no longer walking in agreement, right? Which means we're going to end up in different destinations. Thank you, you can be seated, all right? And we, I don't know about you, but we all have a tendency to at times step out of that agreement with God, Amen and walk in our own way, walk in our own path, and walk in our journey. But it says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? So the first thing is i got to be in agreement with God. When I'm in agreement with God and you're in agreement with God, I firmly believe that we will be walking in step in the same direction towards the same destination. Amen? And so we got to walk in agreement. In Genesis chapter 5 and verse 24, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. How cool is that to have that set of you in the Bible, that Enoch walked with God? And he's the only guy in the Bible that, as far as we know, didn't die because it says Enoch walked with God and God just took him, right? How, how cool would it be to, to walk so close with God, God to say, you know what, I'm not even going to let you go. I'm going to take you with me right now. How many think that would be pretty cool, right? You're just going right now. He's the only one, so chances are that's not happening. I don't want to get your hopes up, right? We also know in Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 9, the Bible tells us that Noah walked with God. So there's a pattern in Scripture of walking in God with God. And it means to walk with God in agreement with God, right? Walking with God doesn't mean you're just on a stroll and you don't know who he, It means you are walking with God in agreement with God. You're trying to get to know God. You're watching his step and you're following in his steps because you want to live the life that God has called you to. You want to be faithful to God. And so the first step is to be in agreement. Look at your neighbor and say, be in agreement. Be in agreement. Oh, you can do better than that. Say, be, in be in agreement. We need to understand that if we're to walk with God, we've got to agree with God. Amen? If you're taking notes, you should write that down. If I'm going to walk with God, I've got to be in agreement with God. Because his ways and his paths are perfect. He will never lead you astray. 
Another thing to understand is if you're going to walk with God, you have to first have the, the Spirit of God in you. That means you have to have put your faith and trust in Jesus, and Jesus promised that he would give his Spirit to you, and his Spirit would live in you, and that's what will help you walk in alignment with him. Amen? So it starts with agreement that helps us walk in alignment. And here's what I know. If you want to see God's purposes fulfilled in you, anybody want to see God's purposes fulfilled in you? I think there's like two people. Um, anybody want to see God's purposes fulfilled in you? Come on. Amen. If you want to see God's purposes fulfilled in you, you have to walk in agreement with his word. You have to understand his word. You, you have to know his word so his word can be established in you. Amen. You, like I said, you can't have all the favor of God, the blessings of God, and, and, and walk in the assignment of God if you don't first agree with God. Now, a lot of us like to say, well, I agree with God all the time. But agreeing with God mentally doesn't mean that you're in alignment with God all the time, right? One of the most difficult areas for people to get in alignment with God is with their money. Oh, there you go. He went there. It's just hard. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. I, and you'd say, yeah, I agree that, that tithing is God's pattern and God's plan, but then what, what happens is we can say that we agree, but if we don't get alignment, then how can we ever get towards the assignment, right? And so what happens is when you, here's what I firmly believe, when, when you tithe, and, and the Bible talks about tithes and giving, but tithe is a 10% that God uses for the people of God to help build the kingdom of God, right? That's how God resources the kingdom, through his tithe. When you tithe, you know what you do? You get in agreement with God. When you get in agreement with God, what you're doing is you're creating space for God to work. Amen? You're, you're, you're creating space. So I just gave to the church 10%. That created a 10% hole in my economy. And all of a sudden, God has a, a big hole that he can work with. He has space. You know what that is? That is my trust and my faith that allows him to work in my life. Until I do that, I can say all, all the time, I agree with God in this. I agree, with, I agree that I should serve. But until I serve, I'm not making space for God to work. So I not only get in agreement, but I get in alignment. If you want to see God work, you've got to get in agreement and alignment. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, that the kind that he will find acceptable. It says, this is truly the way to worship him. Then it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. And then you'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and what? And perfect. See, he gives the marching orders. Amen? God gives the marching orders, and then we have to make a choice what to do next. And what you do with who God is will determine where you end up. What are you doing with who God is? He gives the marching orders. In other words, if I'm going to get in agreement, i got to start marching, right, in agreement with him. If I'm going to get in agreement, it says that I am to be a living sacrifice. In other words, that means I sacrifice my time, my talent, my treasure. I put my life out there for him to use. I don't just believe it in my head, but because it's in my heart, I start walking it out with my feet. Because I, I believe this agreement starts in the head, but alignment really takes place when we begin walking with our feet. His word is a lamp into our feet and what? A light into our path. We follow it because we want to be in alignment. God is calling us to live our life in alignment. He's calling us to completely surrender to him. But you can't be completely surrendered unless you're in full agreement. Amen? Yeah. Let me say that again. You can't be completely surrendered unless you are in full agreement. It's a choice that you have to make, a choice to believe in God's goodness, amen? A choice to trust in his greatness, a, a choice to be in obedience to his guidelines. But being in agreement is a choice on your part. And you'll never know what it means to be in agreement until you get into the word of God and you find out what the word of God says. And when you find out what the word of God says, you've got a choice to make whether or not you're going to be in agreement with what he says, Amen? You'll never fulfill your assignment 
unless you first get in agreement. Amen? Some people walking around purposeless because they've not yet chosen to agree with God. To agree with God in all things. Agreement with God is an attitude of the heart that is dead set on glorifying God. And it is a path that leads to joy and peace and fulfillment. You know one thing I learned? Anyone can agree with God when things are going well. Right? It's going good. God, I agree with everything you're doing right now. But man, when life gets in the wilderness, what about then? Because here's what I know. If you don't agree with God before the wilderness, chances are you're going to have a difficult time agreeing with him in the wilderness. And so that's why it's important to get yourself in agreement with God no matter where you find yourself in life because you're going to need that someday. Some days you're going to need that faith that you didn't maybe need as much of it yesterday. But it's that agreement that gets you in alignment so as you're walking in your assignment, you can trust God no matter where you find yourself. Amen? Because sometimes you find yourself in a place that doesn't make sense. Sometimes you find yourself in a place that you never expected to be there. But when you trust God and you agree with God, you can say, I might not have all the answers, but I'm okay with where I'm at because this is part of my assignment. And I prepared myself for it by being in agreement with God. Agreement is a huge part of our walk with God. Agreement is total surrender, amen? Amen. Total surrender is a daily practice, too. Something you have to do. Paul said, I die daily. It's a daily thing. Total surrender looks like Galatians 2.20. When the writer said, my old self has been crucified with Christ. Or, estoy crucificado con Cristo. It is no longer I who live, right? But what? But Christ lives in me so i live in this earthly body by trusting in the son of god that's what it means to be in agreement who loved me and gave himself for me if you want to be in full agreement with god you've got to be in full communication with god so you can surrender completely to his will amen and and i believe the two best ways that you have to be in communication with god is through prayer and study in the word of god That's communication. That's back and forth. It's two-way. You want to know what God wants from your life. You want to know what you need to get in agreement with. you got to get in conversation with God. In Luke chapter 22, Jesus, before he went to the cross, he took some disciples and he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, which was halfway up a hill, by the way. So you had to climb a hill to get there. was a little bit of work to get there. It wasn't on the top of the mountain. It was on the side of the mountain. And it says there in Luke chapter 22, it says, Then accompanied by his disciples, Jesus left the upper room and went, I love this, and went as usual. Don't miss that. He went as usual to the Mount of Olives. In other words, this wasn't the first time he got up and decided to pray. It wasn't like, man, I'm getting ready to face the cross. I guess I better get in agreement with God. This wasn't the first time. This was a practice of his life. I would assume that Jesus got up every day and the first thing that he did is he went to get with his heavenly father because he knew the day that was ahead that he had to get in agreement with his heavenly father the day, at the beginning of the day, amen? It starts with agreement. You got to get in agreement. You'll never be in alignment until you get in agreement. Then he said to them, he says, there he told the disciples, pray that you'll not give in to temptation. Some of you should start praying that right now before the rest of this day hits. Amen? How many know you're going to be tempted today? How, how, many, how many know that, that you got an enemy that's going to draw you away? You, you need to get, get ahead of that by getting an agreement and asking God to give you the strength right now to face whatever temptation is ahead. It says, then Jesus walked about a stone's throw away. He knelt down and he prayed, Father, if you're willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. And then he said this, watch this agreement. He said, yet I want what? Your will to be done, not mine. On another occasion in Matthew chapter 17, Jesus went up a mountain that we now call the Mount of Transfiguration. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and they went up the mountain to pray. And the reason they did that is because prayer is what helps bring alignment to the agreement. Amen? 
And so they went up there, and while they were there, Jesus was transformed into his glorious state. And Peter, James, and John had a front row seat. They didn't know that was coming. They didn't know that they were going to see the glorified Jesus on the top of that mountain. I mean, what a mountaintop experience. Uh, I can't imagine what it had been like. These guys had walked with Jesus. They had seen miracles. They listened to him teach. They were pretty much already convinced that he was the Messiah. But yet in this moment, they got a chance to see Jesus in his glorified state. What a mind-blowing experience that had to be. And and so what I think is incredible about that story, if you take time to read it in Matthew 17, you find then right after that, as incredible as it was, Jesus didn't allow the disciples to sit and soak in that moment. The, the purpose wasn't to wow them by his transformed, glorified body. The purpose was to increase their faith. Amen? Amen. And, and so Jesus, and, and, and what, the way Jesus, he didn't let them just sit and so We don't come to church to go, wow, that was a great service. Wow, that song was amazing. Wow, wow, wow. To only walk outside of here and just sit and soak in that and never do anything about it and never tell anybody about Jesus and never point somebody to faith in Jesus. That's not what it's about. It, it's not to sit and soak, but Jesus then grabbed his disciples and got them moving back down the mountain, even when Peter said, Hey, how about we build a few tents up here and hang out in this experience? Because a lot of times when we have those mountaintop experiences, we want to stay there because they feed us. But Jesus knew it wasn't about feeding them, it was about getting down that mountain because they had an assignment. So they had to get an agreement so they get an alignment so Jesus could move them into their assignment. And so he took them down the mountain. And little did they know that at the bottom of the mountain there was a desperate man with a desperate need for a desperate son which I think serves as a reminder that even when God reveals himself to us in a moment in a powerful way, that, that revelation is for the purpose to light us on fire so that we could go out and share our faith with people in this world. Amen? Yeah. So we could share Jesus. So they encounter this man, this father, who needed a breakthrough for his son. Matthew 17 and verse 14 says, At the foot of the mountain a large crowd was waiting for them. And a man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly, and he often falls into the fire or into the water. Another translation said he throws himself. There are some scholars who believe that in that culture that would have leaned towards the thought that this kid's in so much despair he was trying to take his own life. So the father's in despair, the family's in despair, the son is in despair. The father is desperate because he loved his son. Couldn't, couldn't handle the pain that he saw his son, so he humbled himself and came to Jesus. So he brought his son to Jesus. Or he actually brought his son to some of the disciples of Jesus who weren't able to cast out the demon. As you pay close attention to Jesus' response, listen to what he says. This man says, so I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. And Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people. You faithless and perverse generation. That's what he was saying to his disciples. He said, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? I mean, they were just on the the mountaintop with him and saw the glorified Jesus. He said, bring the boy here to me. And then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy and it left him. And from that moment, the boy was well. And afterwards, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? You don't have enough faith, Jesus said. You don't have enough faith. He said, I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. See, when the, the disciples came privately to Jesus, when they asked, why couldn't we cast out the demon in a word, Jesus told them, it's because of your unbelief. If you ever wonder why your life lacks the power of God that it should possess. The only answer is unbelief. He 
He said, it's your unbelief. That was the, the root problem. Often we want to experience the supernatural power of God and see him move. But like the disciples, often we operate in unbelief. I love when the disciple says, Lord, I believe. The man said, Lord, I believe, but help my what? Help my unbelief. And I believe this, that the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead is the same power that's available to you and I. But the only thing that holds it back is unbelief. See, in this instance, I want you to hear this. The problem wasn't the demon. The problem was the unbelief. The demon was only there because of the unbelief. Often we try to deal with the secondary issues that are the, the cause of what the root is. And for most of us, the root of most of our problems is unbelief. The, the, the root of why this isn't happening, or the root of why, why this part of our assignment is not being carried out is because of unbelief. The first thing that Jesus said to them, he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, you might think, man, that's pretty harsh, man. Jesus being pretty harsh. But he wasn't being mean. He was just using two distinctive words to describe the root cause of their unbelief. By faithless, he meant that they were too disconnected from God. And by perverse, he meant they were too connected to the world. When you get disconnected from God, it's typically because you're too connected to this world. And when you're too connected to this world, right, you're going to be disconnected from God. And the result of that is going to be unbelief. Unbelief. The disciples obviously were too connected to this world. Instead of walking in faith, they walked in unbelief. And I believe we do the same thing very often. And because of that, we never see God's kingdom manifested, his power manifest in our life. Now, the remedy is connected also with another gospel where it says that this kind of demon only comes out through prayer. Anybody know what else it says? And what? And fasting. Through prayer and fasting. Because here's, here's the deal. He said, Jesus said, he didn't tell his boys just to pray. He told them to pray and fast. And both are necessary because prayer is what connects us to God and fasting disconnects us from this world. When, when we fast, it's we are denying ourselves of our, our worldly need for a time so that we can connect with God and hear from God. He said th this kind of power that is necessary only happens when you do those two things. And when you pray and fast, I want you to catch this. When you pray and fast, the first thing that comes out is not the demon, but the unbelief. Think about that. The unbelief. That's what Jesus was, was going after in this text. He was going after the unbelief. The demons coming out or whatever miracle you need is just a byproduct of your believing in God and walking in faith. And when you come in alignment with God, you begin to see his perfect will done in your life as God has already established it in heaven because fasting is not just so you can get miracles and breakthroughs from god it's about aligning yourself with god prayer and fasting say i agree with god now i'm going to prove that by prayer and fasting i'm going to align with god so i can prepare myself for his assignment you don't fast to get god to change something you fast so you can be changed and come into a greater level of faith and when you are in agreement and alignment with god we find that God can use us in ways we never thought possible. And that's where the fun begins, amen? When you know you're walking in God's purpose. So my question is, what's your assignment? What is your assignment? I believe in order to know that, you gotta get an agreement and alignment. I believe God has a very specific purpose for each person, but he also has a general purpose for all of us. And I've said it many times recently, and that is simply this, that we partner with God to bring people to the foot of the cross where they can meet Jesus. You said, Pastor, what, are, what is my assignment? I just gave you your assignment. 
I don't know how God's going to work that out specifically, how God's going to use it in, in the, the, the area that he's placed you in, the, the workplace, school, wherever it is. But I do know this, that our, our assignment is to partner with God to bring people to the foot of the cross where they can meet Jesus. Amen? It's about bringing people to Jesus. And, and so we don't come here to sit in this service just to hear great songs and hear a halfway decent message and say, I'm going to sit and soak on that. That was so enjoyable today. No, we come here so we can see the glory of God and we can realize that we've got to get in agreement with God and line up with God because we have an assignment to go out and to tell people about Jesus because without Jesus, you'll not spend eternal life with God in heaven. Amen? It's the most important assignment that we have to assemble together, to partner with God, to bring people to the foot of the cross where they can meet Jesus. You do that, then you'll find yourself walking somehow in the midst of your specific assignment. God will give you clarity. And I believe this, the deeper the agreement, the greater the alignment, and the greater the alignment comes a commitment to the assignment. God didn't put you on this earth just to simply exist. God put you on this earth and gave you an assignment to build his kingdom. And that's what we're here for. That's why it's important that we live consistently in the dips and the tips. That's why it's important that we get in agreement with God before the high moments and before the low moments and all the in-between. Because that will help us live with faith. See, God wants to increase our faith, amen? God, God, God wants to increase our faith so we'll share our faith so faith can be added to somebody else through Jesus. If you're here today and you've never put your faith in Jesus, I want you to know this. The Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of God's glory, but God demonstrated his love for us while we're still sinners. Christ died for us, and that whoever calls on his name will be saved. That's the first that's the first point of agreement in your life is to agree who God is and agree that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for your sins and to put your faith in him and believe that, that he wants to save your soul and give you eternal life and give you a purpose on this earth. That's the first thing. So if that's you today and you need to do that, I, I want to help you with that. I want to lead you in prayer with heads bowed and eyes closed. Would you pray this? Say, God, I know that I've sinned. And God, I know that that sin separates me from you because you're a holy God. And so God, right here, right now, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And God, today, I put my faith and trust in you. I believe that you gave your son Jesus, that he died and he was buried and he rose again to prove that he was God and to give me eternal life. And so God, today, I get in agreement with you and I put my faith and trust in what you've done for me. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You'd say, Pastor Tim, with an uplifted hand said, I prayed that prayer today to, to trust in Jesus. I'd love to pray for you. If that's you, you say, would you remember me? Just slip your hand up if that was you anywhere in this place. Say, I prayed that prayer today. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else? Say, I prayed that prayer today to trust in Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for, for your word. We thank you, God, for the fact that you created us for something, for a purpose, for an assignment. But God, I pray for our faith today. I pray that it might grow, that it might increase. And God, where we struggle with faith, God, I, I pray that you would help our unbelief. God, that we would recognize it and that we would get in agreement with you and that we would start there. And God, as we get in agreement with you, God, we begin to line our life back up with every step that we take following you. Knowing, God, that you, that you help us to, to live out our purpose. And so God, I, I thank you for this church. God, help us, God, to to be a church that is reaching people for Jesus. Help us to realize that, that that is our assignment. God, help us to have somebody on our heart at all times that we're praying for. God, help us to take advantage of opportunities to share our faith. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Church, let's celebrate those that gave their life to Jesus today. Last service, this service, we had some folks step across that line and come into agreement with God. And so we thank you for your faithfulness, for your obedience, for your willingness to invest here at Fresh Start Church, not just showing up, but serving and and 
To be honest with you, your financial support is an amazing step of faith. And because of your service, your presence, and your financial support, people cross the line of faith today in both services. And so we thank you for that. We don't take that for granted. Um, there are generosity boxes at each of our exits, and you can always give online. And however you do that, we just want to say thank you. We don't take it for granted, and we know that God is bringing you into alignment for his assignment. So, hey, agreement, alignment, and assignment. We can walk in that today. So we're glad that you've been here. We've got some things going on here at Fresh Start that we want you to know about. Um, all spring, every Monday, we've been doing some things um, to help our church get healthier. And tomorrow night is no exception. So live and in person tomorrow night across our campus, there are several opportunities for us to be able to work on our health, our physical health health and so we have got um, opportunities for men's health preventative health weight loss go online look up at our weekly um, bar that we have on our website and you will find our reset so when you find that and you can have any opportunity that you'd like again alive and in person here tomorrow night at the house if you are ready to get your health in order we would encourage you to come on out we've also got some things coming up in june starting june 22nd for our k through five, uh, fifth grade students so parents in the house listen up if you've been in church any length of time you're familiar with vacation Bible. Bible school where we have summer jam here at Fresh Start Church and um, you know what it is going to be an amazing exciting time for your kids from kindergarten through fifth grade we've got a little video that we want to show you about that take a look at this Make sure that you are registering your kids for Summer Jam starting June 22nd. Again, K through five, fifth grade. So make sure, parents, you know, you know what a difference confidence makes in your child. And I don't know if your child has struggled over this last year. Maybe they need a little extra dose of confidence. That's going to be the focus for Summer Jam this summer. So make sure that you get your kids registered. Last thing I want to mention, ladies of the house, we've got an incredible event this Friday night, kicking off your holiday weekend right here at Fresh Start Church. We have Supper Club. If you've not been out to our Supper Club, I want to highly encourage you, register, go online, find our Supper Club event, and uh, make sure that you get your reservation. We've got some spots still available this Friday night at 6.30, ladies. It's Supper Club. You're going to have a great time if you would like to come out. Thanks so much for being with us, everyone. We hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time.
is coming. 